Hi everyone, I'm really pleased that we're able to talk to Hazel Buxton today of Highland Hat Blocks in Scotland. And she's going to talk all about the business and what they make. And I'm sure you're going to be fascinated because it's marvellous, marvellous stuff. So hi Hazel, thank you for joining me. Hi. Hi. It's great. So tell us all about how it all started way back when. Okay, well, firstly, I'm Hazel, and the other half of the business is Dom, who is my husband. I love um, a family business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, basically, we started Highland Hat Blocks about three years ago, but the actual hat blake... Um, <laughs> three years ago? Yeah. The actual hat blocking began um, almost 20 years ago in 2001. Um, I started off as a milliner and I bought my first set of wooden hat blocks and thought, oh, this is going to be expensive. Um, thankfully, Dom is an artist and he does a lot of sculpturing and he decided he would come up with a, a form that would suit me. And he came up with some polystyrene blocks and basically that's where it began. Um, about around seven years ago, we gave up the business um, just because of change of circumstances. And then a few years later, we kept getting asked from different milliners, are you still making blocks? And again, change of circumstances, mostly for Dom. Um, we decided that we would start the blocks, just thinking, you know, it would maybe be a small eBay shop, never expecting to what's been happening over the last three years. Oh, amazing. So it's gone from strength to strength. It certainly has, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I like the, the fact that it's a family business. So he designs and creates them all yes, himself. He, and yeah, what, he does, he use, does he use any machinery? He's no machinery used in making the blocks at all. Um, everything's done by hand. He hand carves everything, so it's, it's quite labour intensive. Um, the blocks used to be blue, but we've changed to a grey colour now. So sometimes when he comes in from the cabin now, he actually looks like he's been down the coal mine. <laughs> <laughs> and where do you sell to? Do you sell just we, in the UK? We or? sell to milliners worldwide. We've got um, complete novices, teachers, experienced milliners, and we're now selling to over 55 countries. <gasps> wow. So people are making hats all over the world with your all blocks. Over the world. Yeah, New Zealand, that is, China. That is fabulous, yes. fabulous. And you have your own website, don't you? We do. We predominantly sell from the website. Um, we do have it. We also do. We've got an Instagram page and a Facebook page, <laughs> where we do lots of posts. But we also like to post up what the milliners have made with our blocks. Yeah. So we like to post up their designs, which promotes them and also obviously promotes ourselves. As well. Yeah, and that's not, and it's always lovely to see other people's work, isn't it? You know, yeah, if you're, yeah. if you're a milliner my, at heart. <laughs> my, that's where my millinery side comes in. So I really enjoy it. And I understand how much work goes into every piece that you make. And that. Yes, that's so true. So you say they're made of um, extruded polystyrene, your main range of blocks. And how easy are they to use and look after? I will show you. So, um, as I said to you, they used to be blue. Yeah. Um, and now they've turned to this, sorry, this grey colour. Right. Um, basically what it is, is the company's trying to go in more environmental friendly. Um, so the chemicals used in this one is far less than this one now. Right. <laughs> so this is called an HBCD free um, material. So we now use this material. Um, the blocks are really, really light, so easy to post. They're very easy to pin, and we can still put in your stand and finger holes as normal blocks. And mm -hmm. basically, you use them exactly the same as you would a wooden block, and all you have to do is cover them with cling film to protect them. Right. And what pins do you advise for, for those blocks? 
The pins we advise for these blocks is your standard dressmaker pins, which a lot of people have just got in their house anyway. Um, but you also get the glass head pins as well, which you can pick up at most supermarkets or haberdashery right. stores. Yeah. Um, so easier to use. Um, really easy to pin. Um, and actually, we've had a lot of people with horrific hands. Ah, right. That they've gone back to blocking because they're so easy to pin. So that was a really good bonus to hear that from Yeah, that's good. So uh, what I wanted to ask you about, you're saying you're trying to get more eco-friendly and um, conscious of what you use. So you've now brought out an entirely new range, haven't you? Do tell us all about that. We certainly have. We've brought out our eco range. Um, and they've come about, again, because of Dom being an artist. Um, Dom works big. So he likes making lots of sculptures and he does a lot of his sculptures in paper mache, cloth mache. And he was down in the cabin and working away and he thought, you know, we could maybe come up with a block. Now I know a long time ago that blocks were made in paper mache, but we had to come again up, up with something that was completely environmental friendly. So we've came up blocks where we use a short fibre paper, which is either um, newspaper or cardboard so again it's all recyclable and organic flour and from that we have come up with these our eco-friendly eco cat blocks wonderful and very sturdy i imagine they were very sturdy um again they're they're still lighter than wood yeah um, slightly heavier than the polystyrene, but again, it's still easy to pin. Good. With these ones, you can block with both those pins that I've mentioned, or you can use standard blocking pins. Right, right. The only difference from these is what we're going to do is, at the moment, we've done the stand and finger holes. But what we're finding with the eco blocks is they take a lot longer, hence they're slightly dearer in price on the website. Right. Um, one of the techniques that John's come up with, he's decided, this is a template, we're going to have them hollow inside. Right. So basically you'll be able to put it onto any stand um, for drying and things. And um, Sarah, you cleverly mentioned yesterday that you know you can get blocking into the recess yes. with your hands yeah. easier as well. Yeah, yeah. Hollow. And, and the good thing is, I mean, I have got some very old vintage sort of paper mache ones like that with a hollow centre and I just stand them on another little dome block or or a bowl yeah. or tin of beans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's something that you've got to it, it means you don't have to pay money and buy a stand. Stand, yeah. yeah. Fabulous. Why use it? You know, just use what you've got around the house. Right. So I'd like you to show us some of your blocks and your sets. Um, and because also you've got an ingenious way of fixing them together, which is <laughs> really clever. So do tell me more about those. OK, so I showed you this one earlier. So this yeah. is your standard dome block, which a lot of new milliners will buy a dome block. Yeah. Um, because basically you can use it to, you know, practice lots of things on it. Yeah. So you've got this as one solid block, but we've also come up with a set where you can interchange the tips. So we've got a set where you can have um, three tips. So you could have a flat tip, a slanted tip, and a dome tip. Or we've got another set which comes up with four tips plus a stand. Right. And the way these work is by magnetic little dots. Ah. So you've got, this is your base. Yep. And this is your tip. Uh -huh. And all that happens is, I move my hands out the way. So clever. And so clever. I've had to. I've had to stick things together with sticky fixes before. <laughs> it's a solid <laughs> Oh, so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so again, great. Dom came up with that solution. He yeah. thought, you know, what makes things easier. And we also do this for um, five piece blocks as well. Ah. So we use the magnets for the five piece blocks. blocks as well. Oh, so clever. He's very <laughs> clever, your hubby. <laughs> he is very clever. He's very handy to come. Yeah. So we're going to be, I'm going to be showing um, 
all our viewers the different sets so they can see now how they work which is great it's wonderful but you also offer other things on your website don't you you offer millinery courses and uh, do tell me all about those yeah so um we do at the moment we do four courses um what it is we work with lorraine of luby Joy millinery um what happened was a couple of years well just when we kind of started we decided we would do a blocking course in aberdeen because when I was a milliner, getting up, getting a blocking course in Aberdeen wasn't heard of. Yeah. It was Glasgow for me, um, but I actually ended up going to Wales for my millinery course. So we've come up with four courses. We come up with um, the first one we came up was with the halo block, which I will show you. Yeah. So we're all aware of the halo block. <laughs> That's your most think, popular, isn't it, the halo? Most popular. Um, to be quite honest, I think Don sees these in his sleep. <laughs> He's made pointy ones, uh, tall ones, small ones, <laughs> round ones, thick ones. Honestly, you name it, we've made it. Uh, um, at one point, to be quite honest, we haven't put all the halos on the site because it could have become the halo site. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, crazy. Yeah. So you'd so be run a course for that then. <clears throat> We, we run a course, um, again, it was mainly because a lot of people says, you know, how do you block these? I just can't seem to block these. Um, so I, I got in touch with Lorraine and I said, right, can we do a Halo course? Yeah, no problem. And what we've done is what we wanted to offer on our courses was a course that gives you everything plus a wee bit more. So like on the Halo course, you're shown how to block the, the Halo. You're also shown how to make an internal band and you're also shown how to make lining for this right. and even the lining for this is quite ingenious and um, how right. that's made right. um, and we also make we make a button course as well and um, that's a new one this is the eco button very nice and um, so we do a button course we do a hatinator course and we do a teardrop course Right. And in each course, we, we cover lots of things, but we always put in a little extra as well. So it's a wee bit of a surprise for the milliners who buy the courses from us right. as well. Right. And they're all downloadable, aren't they? They're a downloadable course at the moment because obviously with COVID, there's no yeah. real things happening. <laughs> what we decided was, um, although we did the blocking course in Aberdeen, we really enjoyed it, but it was a lot of work. And when... Yeah. Don's making blocks and I'm doing all the admin. There yeah. just wasn't enough time to get it all done. So what we decided we would do is like a PDF course. So basically people are sent the link. As soon as as soon as the, the course is purchased, the link is sent out. You download the course and then it's yours for forevermore to save, print off, whatever you want to do. Wonderful. It. Wonderful. Very good. I mean, I, I particularly like that your company is happy to help those beginning, those that are starting out, and your hat blocks are ideal for them, and, and they can buy a course as well, they can buy the halo, and then find yeah. out how to make it. That's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. I think it's important because I think because I was a milliner, I knew myself how difficult it is to start in the market. Yeah. And um, so what I try and encourage customers to come and talk to me you know and if I can help them in any way I will do you know oh, um, that's so. what I love about the millinery community we're all very helpful I feel yeah. and you know willing to share ideas and techniques which is obviously how my YouTube started <laughs> but uh, yeah. it's, it's, I find it's a really wonderful world and it's nice now because obviously when I was a milliner there wasn't this technology, this technology, technology yeah. Technology. Whereas um, now it's so easy to talk to people, isn't it? It's it great. is. It is. Yeah. Like we are. Great. Wonderful. So um, we talked about um, pinning to your block, but you also give tips on other techniques for uh, using wire and salt. So do tell me. <laughs> right. So basically, um, when you've got an indent in a block, so if I show you a half an eater block. Yep. So this is your half an eater block and you've got your indent all around here. So you want to create that indent and you need something you think, well, how am I going to do that? 
So basically what we um, came up with is if you use electrical wire that you can basically, you, you've maybe got lying around the house or if you can go to a hardware store, get it from there and try different grades, you know, for different um, depths of Seven, um, yeah. indent that you want. And basically all that you do is you block your material, you, know, you place your material on and then you pin round the wire here. And then as an extra presser onto that, get a big bag, a freezer bag, and fill it with salt. Pop it into another freezer bag. And basically this is so that the salt doesn't burst and come out all over your material. And this conforms to the shape <clears throat> and adds the presser, the bag Wonderful. of salt. Wonderful. Wonderful. Such good tips, honestly. I want to rush off on my cats, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> when you're edging like a hatinator, you're, you're mostly edging it with cinnamon or yeah. brush, which gives you a nice edge. And that's that's another thing I was going to say about the block. Mm. So what I tend to say to them is, you know, get your block, but don't think that that's the shape, that's yeah. it, you know. Yeah. There's so many other things you can do with it. I mean, you can have a deep upturn, a shallow upturn and things. So what I tend to say is cinema is the best thing because it stretches Cheers. Mm. Then you can use it again and again. So basically get a piece of cinema that you would do in the edge of a hat and start it at the front and work it round. Remember about your symmetry of the block, work it round and think, oh, I quite like that shape. And that gives you the edge. And then obviously this one you can't kind of put up to see, but you kind of get an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Know, of what the shape is and with our blocks you can actually mark that line with a pen and right. that can be your cut line as okay. well for your customers is a split payment system and i'd really like you to tell us all about that no problem yes yeah, so we offer um, a split payment system basically it's to make it easier for milliners to pay for their order um as most of our blocks are made to order. We don't really carry stock at all. So you are talking roughly about four to five weeks for an order to be completed. Um, so you let me know exactly what you're looking for. Um, normally I do split payments at £100 or more on the order. But if it's less, speak to me. I'm more than willing to help out, not a problem. And basically I send you your first invoice for half the payment. And then... A few days prior to dispatch, I will send you the second invoice, which will have the second half plus the postage. Right. And basically you pay for it then. So it just means, you know, you, you don't have to put all this money out at once and then wait another four to five weeks. You're basically paying half and then the second half. Which is, which is wonderful because uh, especially for milliners starting out or students, it, it spreads the cost for them and as you say, if you're paying all in one lump and then you're waiting five weeks for it to arrive, you're like, oh, I want it here now. You think, oh, I've paid this money. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, I want And the thing is, yeah, it just gives you a bit of breathing space, you know, as well. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and it maybe gives you a bit of money to go and get some millinery supplies or whatever as well. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's really been successful. And it, it doesn't matter to us at the end of the day, you know, we're still, getting, still getting paid. paid. Yeah. 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 So, no, it's really, really been popular. Also, what I, I like, Hazel, is that you do give a lot of tips for using your hat blocks because people have a tendency to just see the hat block as one shape and think that's it. So do talk to us about that. Yeah, um, what I try and, again, it's probably because of my millinery background, but a lot of time people get a block and they block it as, as it is, you know, but there's so much more you can do with a block. For instance, you know, you've got like a half an eater block. You can have a, a deep upturn. You can have a shallow upturn. You can use it upside down. You can cut it slightly shorter at the front. There's all different things you can do. And the beauty of our blocks is once you get the style that you really like, you can draw it on with a pen. You can mark it and say, you know, that's, you can give it a name. And that's it set for the next time you block on it. Yeah. And then the next time 
draw another line and that's another shape that you've got on this block yeah it's the same with you know every block i mean your dome block especially there's so much you can do with a dome block yeah it's it's just amazing yeah do a lot of do a lot of free form and yeah yeah it's it's brilliant yeah wonderful it's been fabulous talking to you i've really really enjoyed it and lots of interesting hints and tips and ah everyone's gonna love it and i just want to rush off and buy all your hat locks now (laughs) (laughs) so thank you very much i hope you've enjoyed it too Yes, Sarah, I know it's been really good. So thank you very much for asking me and thank you to everybody who's watching. Okay. And say hi to Dom, the man behind the blocks. (laughs) I certainly will. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.